In a world with entirely too many shows about cars, this is another pointless automotive podcast. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, hi. <laughs> How's it going, Chadwick? Hey, Frank, what's happening, bud? Oh, you know, just another another day, another not dollar. <laughs> um, but uh, how, how are things? Things, yeah. things are good with you? Things are good. If time was money, this is actually costing us. So we'll It is, that. and it is. <laughs> um, it's but with, the with, sacrifice. It is. The sacrifices we make for people to not listen to us, but that's okay. That's our cross to bear. <laughs> um, and and part of that is um, us talking about cars. We we I think we said this not too many weeks ago. Of this that we like to talk about uh, the trash of the automotive world in a lot of ways. You know, <laughs> we don't spend right. too too much time like you know waxing poetic about you know should should we should one of us get a, a you know a nine nine. One GT3 or a 992 GT3. If 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 do you prefer Ugh. the Aventador, uh, or or would you rather have like a a, a, a Gallardo Evo? Like sure, yeah. We, we we like the shallow end of the swimming pool and the gene pool. Um, but with with that said, you know some cars are even worse than other cars, and some manufacturers have made plenty of terrible cars some have made fewer yeah. terrible cars and i wanted to go mm. people like to talk about the goat greatest the greatest of all time, of all time. i can't do a good goat i can't that was pretty good man that was really i thought it was a subpar bleat but what are they more um, about ah, ah, ah. I, what's the difference between a goat yours is more sheep yours is very sheepy it's sheepish yeah you gotta oh. <laughs> oh, 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 whoa! Hidden talents, Chadwick. Yeah, yeah. How did I not know you had that arrow in your quiver this whole time? Um, <laughs> so the goat, the greatest of all time. I'm thinking about the worst of all time, right? <laughs> the wo, the wo, the woat, roads. But like you know, I, I think we mentioned a number of weeks ago how I have maybe arguably the worst Porsche of all time. Maybe we'll discuss this later, but that's the, the Porsche 924. Porsche in every, quotations. Every, exactly. Every manufacturer has their their woat. Um, and so why don't we just do that? Let's just talk about the Stand worst it. of all time for various automotive manufacturers. Mm. Um, and we, we haven't we haven't compared notes. Um, I oh. think we'll just, and some of, like, there's probably a ton of manufacturers I haven't even Put, made notes about so i'll have to think on the fly and vice versa what um what why don't you go first pick a manufacturer and give me your opinion on uh, that manufacturer's worst product offering that, of all time this is kind of hot uh sob and i'm not oh. going to pick a particular model because i love sob but i'm going to say did, that the later models sob. and these are going to be distinct models the 94 the 97 to a lesser de degree the 92 these were not sobs. And these Bad came later. Special. Yeah, absolutely came later in it. And to me, on their own, they're fine. I'm going to talk about them in a second here. But what it signaled to me was the demise of the Saab brand. Once a company starts rolling out purely badge engineered products, it's not good. It's never a good right. sign, right? Yeah. So 9.7 was solid on its own. Uh, you know, you could get it with a 5.3 or the bigger to that that that's where v8s bigger v8 yep. and those are fine the 94 arrow was cool because it was so damn rare sorry right? I, I just i just spilled bubbly water all over my chest while you were describing <laughs> nothing, this to me nothing more that was, that, that was gonna be a good been... oh no oh god <laughs> I, I swear it's literally water. it's i'm not drunk i'm not drinking at all it is a, this man it is off. a it is a sparkling water um but for those of you that are watching along at home just got a little bit of a treat sorry that Don't was... let your friends drink bubbly water on air. I know, right? Um, I'm so, so I'm so hydrated. Um, the 94X Aero, super rare, 300 horsepower car, kind of cool. Sabaru's, we both owned them, very cool cars, WRXs basically. But boy, for me, uh, nothing really says like worse model than someone else's model, and that's all you offer. And yeah. for the message behind it. So for Saab, I had to say 949792. I mean that's 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 kind of the death rattle for kind of all brands, right? Like that was Pontiac at the end. Um, I mean that was kind of always old Oldsmobile's last 
I don't know, decade of existence. GM up and down um, with badge engineering along their their growth trajectory for sure. Yep. I mean Mercury, that was the death that was their death rattle at the end. Um so yeah, I mean that that's kind of it. And the nine that nine four arrow that you're talking about, was that platform shared with like the um what's the Cadillac that nobody buys? SRX. Called, SRX, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um and so yeah, I don't know. I, I, I agree. I'm trying to think of one that was what was Saab's like worst pure Saab product? Gotta go back um, a ways. Yeah. I mean, because even if you said Saab 9000, which I really want a 9000 arrow, that aside. Um, yeah, but it's not even unadulterated. That wasn't a, even that wasn't yeah. a, pure, a pure Saab product because that was platform shared with Alpha and someone else I can't remember. Maybe it was Opal. It was Opal, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and that was heavily reworked by Saab. But, you know, I just. I don't know, 9.3, and I like a 9.3. Yeah, they're not bad cars. Not bad cars. 9.5s look great. Yeah, yeah, you get the 9.5 um, aero uh, wagon. Those are with cool. A, with a manual. Yeah, that's a good Yeah, car. so I mean, you're right. I mean, they're, they're badge engineering products, so it's like not pure Saab, but it was Saab enough, and it was offered as a Saab, and, and, and yeah, I agree. Really, either of those, and probably, probably the Saab 9.7, just like... Uh, you know, it's a fine, it's a t- completely adequate car. Right, right. Um, but just like, I don't know, buy a, a Trailblazer or an Envoy. <laughs> or uh, was it the Azuzu Ascender, I think, was also? And the Buick Rainier. And yeah. did they do a Pontiac one? I don't remember. I, I don't remember if they did a... Um, Saab? But... No, 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 no. No, but I mean that platform, the oh the, yeah, the, the Trailblazer platform that no, was the nine seven. That was the Pontiac didn't have anything more aggressive than like an Aztec or Transport. They had a Torrent, but I think that was an e- Chevy Equinox. Yeah, that I think was that's the wrong SUV. That was freaking. Gross. Um, but yeah, I, I I I'm inclined to agree. Really, any of those um, are probably the worst sob of sobs is yeah fine cars on their own but the the fact that like most of the lineup was badge engineering that's the sign right there yeah um how about you man what's next what automaker made a made a faux pas um i've got some int- i've got one and a half for ford oh okay ford, there's a breadth of of poor <sighs> fords sure um but a lot of them you look at them and you're like okay like i can you know, the Mustang 2, it's like, yeah, it's kind of a crap car. It's my next one. But yeah. there was some interesting stuff, and, like, you can kind of see what they were doing at the time when they did it, right? Um, circle, circle era, you know, late 90s for Torres, same deal, right? Mm. Like, uh, like, those have actually aged, I mean, bad, but, like, yeah, yeah, things have aged worse. So I'm torn between two, and I, I'm calling it two and a half. Okay. Because one of them is a half because it was actually a Kia, and that's the Ford Aspire, mm. which I did my driver's training in when I was like whatever fourteen, fifteen. Uh. Um, absolute pile of garbage on wheels. Um, but it's it's it was a rebadged Kia, so I feel a little uh. you know again I don't I feel like we can play the badge engineering game for like a huge swath of these right um and i'm trying to avoid that because i feel like it's mildly disingenuous so i'm gonna say and who knows maybe i I don't know a whole lot about this car i just know it looks like a joke on wheels ford eco sport you ever see those little things yeah like it's like literally looks like it just came rolling out of um like urban mexico city like it was made, Probably it was clearly did. not made for this market. The wheels are too small. The dimensions are strange. And I, I, why anyone would purchase one of those is absolutely beyond me. I can't imagine those are going for anything close to MSRP. Those have to be like deeply under, like I don't, yeah. it hurts my brain to contemplate somebody purchasing one of those because there's, there's no, it's kind of indefensible as, hmm. as an actual offering. And that's a new car. Like it's easy to scare like, throw shade on like an older car that like it was carbureted longer than it should have been or something like that. But it's just, it's so non-competitive. I, it, it, I, it hurt the decision to bring that to the U S market just seems terrible. And anytime I see one, I'm like, what, 
what where, where did you go wrong in your life where you ended up driving a, a ford eco sport like i i, I don't know <laughs> that's where I've i wish we could have one i mean maybe I, maybe i'm wrong maybe they're i wish we could have people ones. call into the show frank and be like hey uh current eagle sport owner uh let me clue you guys into why i made this decision <laughs> yeah. 2004 i xyz yeah yeah i that's... picked up that pipe now i have a hey, i do eco sport. what I do, do you think wanna... about ford I want to echo your statement on the Mustang too for a second. Yeah, I, please. I the thing is the the '60s Mustangs were they still look good. When's the last time? Like I still see them resto modded or just restored driving in traffic, and the dimensions are absolutely gorgeous. The car still looks good. It still looks very good. Uh, it just and knowing that also that it, there are performance variants out there that are absolutely valuable commodities to hold on to. Now the Mustang too had the Cobra, the turboed Cobra, which to me looks awesome, but the performance is hideous. Were there turbo? I thought it. I thought they it was were a turbo CO2. four cylinder. Th- yeah. Hmm. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I thought it was. I thought the the because they had the Mustang Cobra, or then they had the King Cobra too, with like oh. the big snake on the hood and all that, and the Mustang too. Yeah, I'm just saying it really because it's a Pinto based subcompact, right? For the fuel yep. crisis, I I wrote in my notes that Ford Mustangs had lost their edge. Mm-hmm. Well, new edge, hey, new edge hey joke now. there. Uh, there's a couple more coming on the scene here. Uh, good, but good, I'm I'm down for puns. So the V8 option, which was not a five liter, even though they call it that, more of a four nine if you four round nine. up yep. or round correctly. Uh, it just, dude, the zero to sixty time on the V8 was over ten seconds. Oh yeah, because it was. I'm. Um, what was? <laughs> I think the absolute most power you can get, King Cobra, whatever, was like, a hundred and fifty. Yeah, that's that's probably stretching, and I think around 140 was what yeah. they claimed with the V8. And yeah, high quality you, automobile. Come on. Yeah, after following that first gen, I mean, what are you gonna? I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Um, I think in its time, it was it was revered as pretty good because Ford had to build a fuel economy car, but keep <laughs> something kind of sporty in the Mustang. Uh, I looked it up. Sorry, I looked it up real quick. I'm giggling because I looked up the the Ford Mustang yeah. to King Cobra technical data. Um, Horsepower with it, and this is V8. You know, it's got the big V8. This top is like the line, the, baby. The top, 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 top of the line. 139 horsepower. Right there, Let's baby. Go. Hey, that's pretty yep. good. At 140. I was off by one. I, I spotted him yeah. one. Yeah, and it was, it's just, yeah, and it was a two barrel carb. Oh, yeah. Yep. 8, 8.4 to one compression. Cool. 17 miles a gallon. Oh, God. And it came with a, a 264 rear gear, um, which is very tall. Um, yeah. Yeah. Not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're making me feel bad for 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 picking the Eco Sport because that's yeah. The Mustang and I know the Mustang too. Two, the Mustang Two is kind of low hanging fruit. Um, it sure is. I I do think though, if you had a perfect like top like decked out, it's not a good car, but if you had a perfect one. It'd be kind of cool to just like roll up in your King Cobra. I saw a I saw a Cobra 79, 78 King Cobra. I saw a blue Cobra for sale with like low mileage. So that's the Turbo Four, mm-hmm. and it had a uh, blue interior, full blue interior, like seats, dash, everything. Uh, and it was like I think they wanted like God twenty grand for it, which is too much. But it was it's a very striking, cool looking car. Uh, but boy, that performance is not there. Sub subpar. 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 Um. Yeah, man. Ford, I'm with you on that one. My wanna, next. I was gonna say, you want to pick the next manufacturer? Yeah, dude. Mitsubishi. Ooh, I actually didn't put notes for Mitsubishi. Oh, um, I've got do you. Want, do you want me to spit? Oh, you got me. Okay, I was gonna spitball. Oh first, no. Yeah, go for it. So we're talking the manufacturer that brought us such hits as Evos, DSMs, 3000 GTS. Galant VR4s, of course, they could do nothing wrong in our eye. I think we loved 80s and 90s Mitsubishi a ton. And then uh, they released the newer version of the Eclipse Cross. And uh-huh. uh, it's a, I guess making a crossover was the next evolution, Airy step. Hey, hey, uh, hey, keep them coming. Keep day, them coming, baby. bro. All day. So, no, it wasn't. So, the market was totally cluttered. I think it came out in 2016 or 17. I'm not up on my Eclipse yeah. Cross uh, data, but 
to that era was nothing but crossover SUVs. And it still continues to be a market inundated with crossover SUVs. And it just instantly, we all laughed about it. Well, first we got excited because we saw Eclipse coming back. So we were like, DSM, is this a 1G, 2G? What's going on? Please don't be a 3G or a 4G. And it was worse <laughs> than any of that. It ended up being a crossover. It just faded immediately into the background, right? No one, like, I don't know if I've ever heard anyone talk about this vehicle independent of jokes. Like, I, sure. I'm being honest. I've never heard anyone give it an honest, for, for I guess it's a fine crossover, but I look, <laughs> yes. they're still being sold, dude. And I looked I, I back just... last year, you know how many units they sold? 10,000. 10,000 units, Frank. How many of those were to like, like bottom tier rental agencies? Had to be like 80%. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, and did you know this thing stickers over 27 starting? Really? Yeah. It's mildly bizarre. So, I, yeah. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's that's kind of hard to argue with. My, the one I would pick mm. is it's very cool, except I they I, sold like zero of them. Oh. And I think the majority of them got recalled. Do you know those those like early 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 '90s Mitsubishi vans, the square boxy ones? Yes, I think most of them got recalled. It was like a Delica, but not a Delica. It was a different deal, and we had a handful of them here. And th there was a Nissan equivalent too. And I believe every Nissan one they would catch fire, and all of those ones got recalled. I think Mitsubishi had something similar, where the majority of them got recalled. It was a cab uh, over engine design, too, correct. right? Yeah, yeah, it was very similar to the the Toyota van at the time. That that whole kind of Japanese market adapted for for North America. Kind of like model. a Previa. The Previa was definitely a more more successful, obviously. Yeah, more engine. successful, more robust, more advanced. This was like a cargo van, and I cannot tell you the last time I saw one. No. Um. That's a bust. But they were so they 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 literally just couldn't function in this marketplace. That, that's why they didn't exist. Like you'll see the Toyota ones every now and then. Sure. The, the yeah. Nissan ones, all of them were pulled off of the road. Like if you see one now, it's like seeing one of those um was like the Galaxy Seven or whatever, the the phone that would blow up on airplanes and stuff. Oh like yeah. The no oh, that was yeah. like a was that a note? Something? I think it was a, yeah, the Galaxy Note seven or yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, they would they would just self combust mm. um I, that was that's what the nissan ones so all of those are gone like if you find one it like has avoided the ntsa somehow and then some i think there was similar with the the mitsubishi vans where the vast majority of them got recalled and they didn't sell Oof. hardly any to begin with and so um yeah i i i, I saying i think you have the you have the correct answer and i'm just trying to be a little bit mildly contrarian but a van in the time of minivans and you can't even sell them and then the ones you do sell come back like yeah that sucks because they had they they had the expo at the time right or this yes does this predate the expo? no it would be about the same time i think it's con yeah con like yeah they were they ran at the same time concurrently nice so quick question i know your answer uh -huh. do you oh, take one of those vans if you could force one today with a manual cool little boxy van mitsubishi or would you take an eclipse cross Give me the van. Give yep. me the hundred percent. I want to say maybe they called it like a star wagon. I don't remember what they called it, um, but they were cool. It was like a lowered Delica. That's cool. Kind of a deal. Um, and I want to say yeah, early, like early early eight or sorry, early early nineties, maybe late eighties. Um, they had them, and I can't remember the last time I've seen one. Mm, unintentional, unintentional seat warmer feature. That's cool. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's and then the Nissan ones went full full seat heat destruction um there are so many manufacturers i know i know from. i tried to avoid the obvious stuff there um worst mazda let's go let's go Shoot. let's go not obvious in that same vein um i have one that's a little different um do you remember the cx7 Yes, and that came out with the CX-9 at the same time, right? Yeah, but the CX-7 was like the mid-size one, and they were all that 2.3 turbo motor. Yep, same as the Mazda drive. Speed 6 and 3, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they they looked pretty cool. They were they almost looked like, a, like an SUV version of an RX-8. 
You think so? I think a they little look bit. a little Ford a little edgy. Bit. They look a little kind Ford of both. Edgy. Yeah, yeah. Like if you, if you if they had an unholy um, tequila fueled <clears throat> night and uh, produced a an, uh, an automotive offspring, mm. it'd be the CX seven. Um, they were banging bumpers. I had contemplated. I had contemplated. My wife was looking for a car at the time in 2011-ish, 2010, 2011. We ended up at the time with a new, a then brand new 11 Kia Sportage. Okay. Um, moderately optioned. And, but we were looking like, okay, well, what other stuff gets a little nicer that can we get that was used? And so we were looking at one of those, but they were just, they had a re reputation for being just like world-class unreliable. <laughs> yes. And to that end, but it was like, oh, it's a turbocharged four cylinder. It's kind of, it's basically roughly the same motor out of the Mazda Speed 3. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of fun, but like they got brutally bad gas mileage and they just like shredded transmissions and, and, and diffs and all kinds of stuff. I can't remember the last time I, they were around, like they sold a lot of those. I can't remember the last time I've even really seen one. Um, they had a, you can get one in like a cool burnt orange color with like like an ivory interior leather that was kind of cool. I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. And ended up not doing it. And I have no regrets because I don't, I don't, I, they don't exist. No They're regrets. gone. No, no regrets, which is, you know, Mazda's got a reasonable reliability record. They're not world class unreliable, but that particular car was such a heap of garbage. You know, they 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 were too heavy. the The powertrain was designed for it to get bad gas mileage, and mm -hmm. then they blew up. And so I, I don't know. I'd like to like that car, but it's just a pile of trash, which sucks. Yeah, one of my coworkers actually back when I was on the East Coast purchased one new when they came out. Yeah, because uh, we were all pro Mazda because the Mazda Speed stuff was exceptionally hot at that time. Yeah, uh, the Mazda Speed Three was like the darling of automotive press. The Mazda Speed Six was like a good, sneaky, sleepy family vehicle. The Mazda Speed Miata was cool, and then came along this turbo like crossover. So you're like, this has got to be in a line with those, but it really wasn't. She got the orange one too, uh, but the interior was exceptionally cheap feeling to me. Mazda at that time was kind of on the fence of making good interiors, kind of swapping over from their more like stripped out interiors to more like luxurious. Now, now they're like full luxury, right? If yes. you've been in a modern Mazda, it's pretty amazing. But just at this time, it was in this weird crossover. And the part of the reason you don't see them today is the interior. The leather would just strip or whatever it was material. <laughs> like the, delaminate, yeah. Yeah, the dashes were made of like cheaper materials. And mm -hmm. boy, like instantly within the first couple of years, transmission issues with that thing, uh, a couple other big things going on. So I agree with you. I think that and the RX-8 are pretty close for big misses for Mazda. I think they could have done a lot better with that car. Yeah, the RX-8 is... I'm conflicted on the RX-8 because in a lot of ways, I really like it. In a lot of ways, it's like... It's it's beyond flawed. Yeah, um, I'm with you, man. I like it in the dangerous ways. I, I like it as a sports car for its handling and its, its innovative engine. But at the same time, I hate it for its innovative engine and reliability and fuel economy. Yeah. And the first gen... The first... Mo before the facelift, they didn't age too well. Not really. Uh, and, in my and... opinion. Yeah, I... I don't know. I just, I don't know. It's extremely compromised in a bunch of ways, but then it's like, that's kind of also why I like it. I don't yeah. know. I don't know yeah. how I, I've got, a, I've got a, a, a very conflicted relationship with that car. Well, probably uh, why uh, we own zero of them, even though they're both value or they're currently valued at next to nothing. Yeah. Is yeah, your sign right much. there? How we feel? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. K swap candidate though. That'd be, that'd be a hundred percent. Yeah. That'd LS swap good. too. Yeah, yeah, I know the LS swaps are pretty common. I'm sure, I'm sure there's been a K swap or two done because you can you can get those cars in good shape with low miles for no money, like four yep. grand. Um, so yeah, that would be, that would be it. Um, what, I've got what, a, what, what what other manufacturer are you you kicking around? Got a good one here, uh, Jeep. Oh, Jeep. Are you ready for I this? I didn't one? think about Jeep, but are yeah, this, I mean, there's there's this, a couple of <laughs> this turd bomb I'm about to drop. Uh, we have Wrangler Rubicons running literally everywhere, right? Going off road, mm -hmm. uh, well sought after, very premium vehicle. If you owned a Liberty, though, you were barely able to back out of your driveway because your transmission failed half the time. So, stark contrast. Uh, two thousand. I'm talking two thousand six, two thousand seven, right near the beginning where they came out. Um, did you know what other vehicles shared that platform, Frank? Of oh, the 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 original the OG Liberty OG Lib. 
Um, I actually hmm. don't know. Um, it's a Dodge product that also was extremely short lived and boxier, boxier ish. It's not the Nitro. You bet it is. I thought the Nitro. Same. I thought that was a different platform. Okay. No, same platform. I thought that was a different platform because the Nitro Might... came out like later, right? No, I think about that same time, man. Okay. The later the, into the 2010s, 2009, 2008, somewhere in there. But the yeah. thing is, I wrote nearly identical to the Dodge Nitro. Where'd that go? Like, honestly, where did the Dodge Nitro go? It literally came yeah. and was gone. Mm -hmm. um, the worst affront to the Jeep, uh, the, the, sorry, I almost spoiled it. The Jeep Liberty, the worst affront to me was it was called the Jeep Cherokee outside of the US. Oof. I will say you could get that Oof. super rare, the, the, the CRD, the closed rail diesel ones they had the diesel spec ones which are impossibly hard to find and i was actually mildly okay with the styling of that thing oh god um, dude, it's awful not as bad as what my selection would be for jeep for jeep are you gonna say wagoneer no the compass the jeep compass which is basically i don't know what its platform shared with but i feel like it's the same as like the the dodge caliber and I think the Renegade is an updated version of that same platform. The Renegade from... is, I think, I think it's almost all like Fiat. I know the drivetrain on those are Fiat, and I think it's. I want to say it's like the same platform as the the five hundred L X or one of those. Yeah, L X. Yeah. One of the ones that like genuinely nobody cares about that, existing. That, that makes sense, but I, dude, but I get what you're saying. The Compass is equally. Poor, compass is horrible. I, I don't think but, the compass can do anything outside of a gravel parking lot versus at least you can kind of beat up a Liberty a little bit. Like it has, I think it's got an actual transfer case. Yeah. But the Liberties at the time they came out, uh, those early ones with their engine and transmission issues was one of yes. the, it's the all time least reliable. And we're talking about a Jeep product. So I oh, think it, that's it very well least, could be. It maybe it, it has a little more off road credit than the compass, but the fact that the transmission will fail even trying to do something remotely off road. Do you want to know? Do you want to know the platform mates? I just uh, Wikipedia it real quick. Platform mates for the first generation Jeep Compass. What? Dodge Caliber. Okay. Jeep Patriot. Oof. Mitsubishi Lancer and Mitsubishi Outlander. <laughs> <laughs> so we're 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 double dipping on on, on some of that. Um, Winners. Yeah, for me, it was the Liberty just because the the tons of like reliability issues, right? Yeah, I those agree. 3. The compass are crap. I did not um, at the compass. The compass is a horrible. The Patriot's horrible. Patriot's Anything awful. basically, if it doesn't say Wrangler or Cherokee on it. But how funny is it that the Liberty was called the Cherokee outside of the States? That's boy. That was yeah, the, the worst Liberty... part for me. Because it did. We got a second gen Liberty, right? Or did we not? Did we? Only yeah, get the one they generation? they kept going. Unfortunately, uh, they got better, but this I'm talking about specifically the first gen libs. Um, sure, uh, avoid at all costs. Right, right. Be careful though. You don't drop the term libs. You might you might upset people <laughs> um, from Liberia. Um, yes. The if I want to go, should we pick? I know we're, we don't have all time to sit here because there's a lot of manufacturers out there. Unfortunately. Um, should we go? Should, should we swerve out of our lane for a second, real quick? What's Oops. the worst Ferrari? Like just what's the worst Ferrari? Oh, I don't know, man. Um, boy, people used to have three five fives in low regard. Yeah, but that car's always been pretty, at least, and made good noises, even if it like will absolutely try and kill you while you sleep as far as maintenance costs and repairs. Are you gonna goes. say like a real Ferrari or are you gonna say something that's branded as a Ferrari? No, not like a not like Barbie's Ferrari. Okay. Like a yeah, it's a, a real Ferrari. I'm gonna go the four hundred I, which was their like two plus two V twelve car. Okay. From that particular one is like I think like seventy nine or eighty made to like 84 or 85 um which many 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 of them came with a gm uh turbo 400 three-speed auto horrible which is like i you know i people like those cars not necessarily the autos yeah but people like those cars because you know v12 ferrari but the styling doesn't do really anything for me they're boxy which i'm okay with but i just don't like that boxy Fair and enough. people like people like to call the mondial the worst but I kind of like a Mondial coupe. 
I, you know I, what I, I don't like? An F12 Berlinetta. And that's a little bit of a hot take. Hmm, that is a hot take. I don't like the styling of it. Fair. I like I like a mid-engine screamer. I mean, that engine's wonderful. But I just yeah. don't. Something about the looks of that vehicle just doesn't. I don't know. That's you know fair. what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't that's know. fair. Uh, you know, I, there's a lot of that. Like the 612 same. is one that people yeah. have the same kind of opinion on. I think the 612 is like endearingly goofy looking. Yeah, like uh, an FF, an FF is kind of weird looking too, right? Like, yeah. but it's kind of like yeah, a shooting brake, which is Luso. cool. Yeah. yeah, that same, that whole deal, that whole generation of boy, yeah, we shooting better... brake style. All but, right, well, I think yeah. we did it, man. I think, I think we did a great job of naming some woats and calling out some horrible performers on various makes. Yeah, we might have um, to, we might have to do it again sometime and come, like come that. at honda and toyota and lexus oh. and, and some of that i have notes on that so that'll that'll go for another day absolutely um, because otherwise we would actually be here all day if we tried to do all this so how about an automotive uh print ed quiz uh session my friend oh boy oh man and you're um, on the hot seat today i am on the hot seat and i don't i don't i don't know if i'm equipped to take this hot seat but i don't have much Ooh. of a choice okay in the matter so while you cue this up i will clue the people in on mm. what we are doing here today which you haven't figured this out by episode 70, whatever, um, then that's actually our problem, not your problem. Um, what is going to happen here? Chadwick is going to pull up a piece of automotive print copy, an advertisement that came out of a magazine or some sort of uh, publication that was in print media. And he's going to read that type copy, that print copy, um, redacting out any overly identifying information, such as the make, model, trim levels, things like that. It will then be incumbent on me to, within three guesses, try and come up <clears throat> with what the make, model, preferably close to year and trim model as best I can. I get three guesses. I get 10 minutes. I get to ask for hints. If I get a guess wrong, I can ask for a hint and help Chadwick lead me, the horse, to the answer, which is the water. And with that said, Chadwick, you want to read me some print copy and I can try and nail this bad mamma jamma? Absolutely, my friend. So let's break down the print ad for you. At the top quarter of the page, there's a side profile of a gentleman piloting this vehicle and there's blur action lines definitely added into post <laughs> to make it look like it's moving quickly. Oh, moving. First line is the headline, if you will. It's a lot more than you expect for the price. Oh boy, value play, okay. Alrighty. The new blank blank. You expect a lot in a car. State-of-the-art engineering. A comfortable interior, nimble handling, and snappy performance. Ooh, peppy. The blank blank was designed to deliver all of this and more for an unexpected price. Mm. More engineering. Blanks, world class. Sure. You expect more engineering. Not uh, better, just more. <laughs> any, please. <laughs> uh, world class, what well, blanks, world class blend of import and American technology. So big hints there. Captive import. And craftsmanship incorporates many contemporary features. There's the sure footed traction of front wheel drive, the oh. impressive smooth ride of four wheel independent suspension, and the high revving performance of an overhead cam engine. Mm. More room. One of the places many economy cars economize is inside, not blank. The interior is roomy enough to comfort up to five passengers. Okay. And there's more to the interior than just room. Car and driver will cite their source, says, sure. Blank's fit and finish is top notch. That seems so Boy, fucking generic. Notch. Higher mileage. You'd expect a car with Blank's performance and roominess to have to compromise on its mileage. This is not true. You get 30 city, 37 highway. Hmm, not bad. Blank's 1.6 liter engine and five speed overdrive manual oh. transmission make this balance of power and economy possible god i didn't even think it was possible bro uh i'm gonna i'm gonna leave the price off for you okay it includes for the base price it does include standard features like these things that you might not expect reclining front seats cut pile carpeting Ooh. all season radials tinted glass rack and pinion steering and power front disc brakes and then it talks about financing that's enough there, for now is there a 1-800 number to call <laughs> you know it there isn't which is the weirdest oh, thing yeah the all right, buddy, you have 10 minutes starting, let's just say now. Okay. Oh, boy. Um, 
What are we talking so, about? So right? captive import seats five allegedly. I was gonna leave the um, captive import out, but I think I needed a little more meat on this one to make it fun. Yeah, a one point six. Um this screams and a and a value play. Mm -hmm. I mean, this could be something like the Pontiac Le Mans, which was a um whatever, a Daewoo or Kia product or whatever. True. I don't think that's what it is. I think those were roughly a 1.6. It could be like a Dodge Omni, I think. Colt Vista, something like that. Um, could it be a Plymouth? Boy, I don't think it's anything that was... Ooh, you know what? You know what it could be? I think this might this might be I'm mm, I'm gonna go with a because they they made they definitely made a, a point to to call it out by like you know American the American I don't think it's a Japanese I think it's just a foreign combo. Uh, I can let me say find Japanese. the uh, I'm a hundred percent sure it did but I want to read the line exactly. Yeah. Blend of import and American technology. Import and American techno technology. And lot like way more engineering than other engineered products. <laughs> yes. Like several engineerings. Um, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna take a stab here. I'm gonna say this is a Chevrolet Nova. The front wheel drive, four seater front disc braked apparently. Chevrolet Nova. So let's call this a 1987 Chevrolet Nova with that five-speed overdrive. Final answer, Bob. It's a lot more than you expect for the price. The new Nova. Ha! Chevrolet. Chevrolet. Good job, man. Hey, look at that. Um, yeah, I wanted to originally leave that part out, and then I'm like, no, nah, we're going to – it could be a lot of things. The 1.6 was pretty popular. Engine yeah, it was. I know the 4A four, the four FE motor that they had in that. Um, or maybe it was just the 4A. It might have, it might have just been straight up carved. Um, no, the overhead – I don't know. might have been carved. Didn't but, they have um, the 4A GE in it, right? That was in the hot – the spicy version. Correct. Um, that was in the twin cam – the they had a a lower performance twin cam that was the fe motor mm -hmm. that was good for 100 and i want to say 105 horsepower which was pretty and sweet then they had that. a carved yeah. version single overhead cam that was only good that was shared with like the sr5 corolla and that was i think only good for like 90 ish horsepower maybe 88 Dude, it, how oh, sweet dude. would it be to score a Nova Twin Cam? They're like exceptional. Oh, they don't rare. exist. Those were, yeah. were those all black, or did I make that up in my head, Canon? I don't think they were all black, were they? Okay. No, they I can be. Maybe they, they they sold like twelve of them. So, so cool though. Very cool. It was um, like a Celica GTS before that came out. Sort of, yeah. It was it was the it was like a four door version of the front wheel drive. Um, the AE92. So that's yeah, like this, the. Yep. This that was it. The Corolla. Yeah. Oh, the, the Corolla. Like the Corolla GTS twin yeah. cam. And the Celica GTS same engine. That that sweet uh, ass. No, they had a two liter. So you got the three S G E. That was a hotter. That was a, a spicier cookie in that eighty six to eighty nine gen. What about the? What, am I blanket? What's the ninety two pop ups? That's it. So the AE92, it gets kind of convoluted. So yeah, the Corolla AE92. It was a Corolla. Right. It was the AE92 drive. Corolla, which was the Corolla GTS, which was which, way more wedge shaped and looked more like a Celica, Celica than a Corolla. Yeah. And but even wedgier than a Celica. Even it's a it's yeah. Weird. It was, was interesting. An interesting lineup because then they had the hatch version, the FX16, which had the same motor, but like was what the styling was completely different. Didn't have pop ups. It was far more upright. Um, but it was also called a Corolla, so it was it was kind of an interesting, interesting, interesting era. What interesting things, cool car you've been working on, my friend, in the in the oh, garage. Man, what have I been doing? That is that is the question that everybody wants me to answer, um, or at least me. Yeah, um, I'll take it. I'll take I it. I am everyone. Um, damn it. 
So uh been driving the 300 ZX twin turbo after getting it all back together uh, with the water pump fiasco mm -hmm. and all that other fun stuff. So I took it to a, a, a really cool car meet, kind of local to me. It's in Modesto, uh, chasing nostalgia, the Valley Dream car, cars and coffee. Yeah, super cool, man. Uh, it's like a 40 minute drive out and back. So the car performed perfectly. Highway poles, everything shifts beautifully, runs beautifully, doesn't get hot. Um, cool car meet. Uh, the host was actually another Gallant VR4 owner. So we have to embrace them whenever we find them. And he had a, a really cool modded Gallant VR4. So that was really cool to touch base with him. Uh, real PCP, actually project car stuff. Uh, the Mini Cooper S, I'm doing quite a bit of work to it. So new shocks, tires, brakes, all those kind of parts. So that takes time. Like whenever I get a car and I order all the parts to do the restoration, I do so much research. I don't know how you guys are with your cars but I really like compare, see what works best with that platform and try to buy everything of high enough quality, maybe not break the bank, but a good compromise. So just like even finding the sources because different, you know how it is car parts, you get on one site and it's like double the price of another site for no reason, same part. So doing that research, it's very time consuming, but parts are all stacked up. Mini Cooper is ready to get, get going. Sweet. No, those are, yeah, that's going to be fun. Yeah, it's just, car. There's, they're, they're good cars. They're still somewhat underappreciated. They've got a knack for some reliability issues, but I've known people that have... It's funny. I, I know people that have had either incredibly good experiences with them or like incredibly poor experiences with them. Sure. Um, but it sounds like you've got a good one because I mean, it's not like it doesn't seem like it's been it's been too, too tinkered with. And maybe that's no. maybe that's the wild card on those. It's like as long as they were just maintained and they weren't dicked around with too much and they're they're probably yeah. pretty good bone stocks always clutch um the thing is too like i was an owner of the bmw turboed version and that is the yes. one that had the notorious issue especially the carbon buildup. i mean mm -hmm. these supercharged ones weren't without issue but as far like comparison yeah. way better platform plus at eighty six thousand miles it's like <laughs> yeah you're good <laughs> barely you're broken good shape. how about you man what kind of pcp or project car progress have you been in both both honestly <laughs> um so I've been fielding spam phone calls from calling um, defunct 1-800 numbers from car ads from the 80s, 90s, early 2000s. Have um, you been in addition to that, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I've a box full of counterfeit Alibaba life alert bracelets showed up on my Aww. porch. Um, in addition to that, uh, I've been like slowly kind of prepping up the, the little green 924. Ooh. So the big Porsche show is coming up in... What is for us in real time as we speak uh, is in the near future. What will probably okay. be about even the more nearer future. I think this will come out a couple of days before the Luftgekult, uh 9 show, which is the big air-cooled and now water-cooled Porsche show. Mm. It's going to be on Mare Island in Vallejo on the 29th and 30th, I think. Okay. Um, so end of this month, uh, uh, April. And um, Mr. Michael Deeb. A uh, uh, friend of the program, uh, yes. one half of the bid nerds, a uh, guy who knows things, Michael Deep, he uh, shot, uh, shot us a line. I know you're going to be busy, unfortunately, so you're not going to be in town to go to the show. Um, but he reached out to us about um, coming and hanging out and doing some That's extracurricular awesome. activities um, based around the show, after party, a dinner, things like that. So I, I'm planning on attending. Sounds like um, a blast, yeah. And I, as would be appropriate for our little podcast here. I'm trying to bring the worst um, of Porsche had to offer for this thing. So I will be arriving in a adorable, I'm partial to it, but a, a salvage title NA 924 to bring to Lufka Cult and do all of these like driving. There's like a driving rally that Deeb is is, is coordinating. And so I, I feel like I'll take this car and oh, wow. I'll, be, yeah. I'll be the like the little limping puppy at the end of the, at the back of the pack, but I'm okay with that. Aww. And so I've been doing, doing some stuff like that. It, it's I've been driving it around this weekend more, and the more I drive it, the happier it gets. That's awesome. Um, so I'm gonna do that. I'll probably do fluid sometime over the course of this next week in preparation. Um, I did get new injector seals because um, they're just like a press-in O-ring. Mm -hmm. And um, per previous notes from the previous owner's mechanic, is that's part of why it's got a cold start issue. So I have those replacements. They were like a dollar each. So I'll press yeah. those in. Um, and then be ready to press it into service. I got new clips to hold the, the, the little clips that hold the visors up in place are broken. So I bought new ones of those to pop in. Oh. So really kind of ticky tack stuff. It doesn't need a whole lot. I'll just get it cleaned up and tires? I should probably put new tires on it, but I don't know if I'm going to, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I, I won't die. They're just, 
I might die. So um, we'll see <laughs> what I do on that front. But otherwise, it's 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 in good spirits. I'm in good spirits, and it'll be fun to bring to the uh, bring to the party where there's going to be people with like cars deep into the six and seven figures, and I'll just mm -hmm. be in my my yeah no money car, and it'll be great. Yeah, but yours it looks so good. It's it's such yeah, a, it's a good an color. endearing, nice little car. Uh, and unlike your nine T four, it hasn't given you any attitude. It just it just runs. Yeah, the turbo the turbo car gives me grief. Oof. This NA car does not, and so I'm okay with that. You gotta and love so, that. Yes, uh, the best of the best ability is availability. Yeah, yeah. So cool. um, let's, on let's that it. note, we are um, going to uh, wrap it up every time, and. Um, bid y'all's adieu so thanks for listening yes. thanks for watching if you are watching you should do that if you're not um or just consume however you choose whether it's your normal listen to podcast locale or finding us uh that's another pointless automotive podcast on youtube you mm -hmm. can search it up um you can also find us at apa podcast on instagram i me frank all my things and comings and goings are going to be at the photographer's garage on mostly on instagram occasionally on youtube and chad uh wick how about you yeah auto obsessive garage rescues restorations reviews all that kind of fun stuff on the tubes obviously and on instagram with some um me mediocre success yeah <laughs> kind of like our yeah. podcast i get around exactly. to posting randomly i don't put as much effort in but we should all strive but i i do thank you guys for checking us out thanks uh, guys we enjoy hey, doing this and we hope you guys enjoy it as well so we'll yeah. catch you all next time at another pointless automotive podcast take care guys